Good morning, good morning, my beautiful, beautiful church family. How's everyone today? Isn't it gorgeous outside? Spring is coming. Yes. So find that place that's comfortable and just allow your body to relax. And if it feels right, softly close your eyes. And notice your breath as you breathe in and softly and gently breathe out. I'm constantly jotting things down. So one day I saw this sticky and it said, practicing the presence of God. Now I don't know where I heard it or saw it, but I wrote it down. This is the title of a book, The Practice of the Presence of God, which is a book of collected teachings written in the 17th century. So what does this phrase mean, practicing the presence of God? How can you keep God in your life? on a daily basis, what do you do? We have been renewed, we have been rejuvenated and refreshed. So now our path has been made clear and clean to enhance our relationship with God. Our goal is to live in his presence and feel and experience his encouragement and feel his love. So what are your thoughts? Pray. It's a way to open your heart, express your thoughts through speaking words of gratitude. Read. Study the word of God. Think about how the word can be a part of your life. Meditate on those thoughts. As you feel the urgency to walk in God's presence, you will feel your heart sing with the love of God that you have allowed in. Where your treasure is, there is your heart also. So let's take another breath together and feel the warmth and the beauty of today. Share this moment as you practice the presence of God in all that you do and all that you say on this day and every day. So gently open your eyes and smile. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, it's good to see you. It's good to see everyone. Everyone is looking amazing. Uh, we are here. Uh, God has woken us up this morning. We are alive. We are breathing in our right minds and clothed in 
we are just here. And I want you all to join us as we sing this welcoming song. This is a song that has been in the church for many, many, many years. It is tra traditional. And I love those because it allows, as you all know, for the congregation to join in. Because praise is not a spectator sport, y'all. It's not something that you show up to and just be a spectator. It is something that you get involved in. It is something that we do together as a church body and as a unit. So it feels so good to lift our voices together, make a joyful noise into the Lord together as a church. And I want you all to join with me in singing this amazing, beautiful song. We have come into this house, gathered in. disciples where two or three are gathered in my name I will be in their midst where two or three are gathered in my name and this is what makes this song this is what makes this song so brilliant we have come into this house and gathered in his name there are many places that we come together and gather we gather at the grocery stores and we gather here and gather at schools and at at work but when we come here y'all we are gathered in his name to worship him amen amen and we don't have to wait for it to be church wherever we are we as long as we are doing what we are doing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christ our Lord. Now let's sing this one more time and let's sing it for real. We have come, we have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. Oh, we have come, we have, we have come. come into this we have house, come. Yes, we have. gathered in his name to worship him. 
that again. Let's say that again. Worship Him. Worship Him. So, so I want to keep that going. I like that traditional thing we're doing. I want to keep that going. There's a song. Can you come up here? Can you come up here, bro? I'm talking to my big brother. Can you come up here? <laughs> give, him a, give him a hand, y'all. Come on now. Because as I said, as I said during the revival, y'all don't just have a pastor, y'all got a singing pastor. <laughs> this is something I've seen you do before. <laughs> So I said, let's do this. We're going to say, this joy, let's say this together. Here we go. Say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Listen, 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 listen. The older I get, I ain't too old. But to him, I'm real old. <laughs> but the older I get, the more I think about what it means to have peace in my life. I have walked away from arguments. I have even walked away from arguments that I could have won. I have walked away from what I thought was friendships. I've walked away in the name of peace. And in those situations, people couldn't understand why I was so peaceful. But I am connected to a peace that surpasses all understanding, amen? Now, we're talking about joy here. We're not talking about, you know, if I, if I just get that new job, that's gonna make me happy. Because if you lose that job, that's going to make you sad. You will be on a roller coaster. We're not looking for happiness, y'all. We're looking for joy. Because joy is something on the inside. The older folks said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And therefore, the world can't what? The world can't what? The world can't what? This joy that I have, let's sing that together, church. This joy. This The world didn't give it, yeah. The 
high and eternal father we take this time to call upon your divine holy spirit to gently move amongst us as we gather here to praise honor and give thanks to you for all the grace and mercy that you unselfishly grant us all we take this time to thank you for the breath of life this morning we do not take this for granted we desire a closer relationship with you oh god we pray here and now that your spirit gently touch the hearts and souls of each and every one of us. For your word says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be amongst them. In the divine and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray that you, your presence here be felt and manifested in this holy and sacred place. For we are gathered here to worship, praise, glorify you, O Lord, in spirit and in truth. O Heavenly Father, by way of your compassionate grace and abundant mercy, you have sustained us and strengthened us. So with gratitude and admiration, we lift our voices to give you all the praise and the honor that you most rightfully deserve. Thanks be unto you, almighty God. In this we pray, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You know, as a, as a church, there are certain words that come directly out of the church experience. Amen is one of them. Amen. Just in everyday life in society, you say amen, amen to that. Somebody say amen, amen to that. You know that person didn't come out the church, you know. But the other word that you hear that comes out of that church experience Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, a person, uh, I've seen people be in a situation where they were in a dark time. And next thing you know, that door open and that ray of light comes in. And they just say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It is so much, there is so much packed into that one word. Hallelujah. Think about the last time you used that word. Hallelujah. Now I want you to think about the fact that God woke you up this morning. That's a reason to say hallelujah. That's a reason to say hallelujah. Someone said, you don't realize how much a blessing taking a breath is until you can't breathe. Taking that breath you just took is a reason to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing this together, church. Hallelujah. 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 Say that one more time. Let's say that.
There's a thing that our elders used to say. I don't hear it as much anymore. But some of our elders used to say a thing. They would say, hallelujah, anyhow. Yeah. Hallelujah, anyhow. What that would signify is they are going through something right now. And the hallelujah was a, was a, was a thing of praise, but the anyhow, it recognized the faith that they had. That yes, I will go through the valley of the shadow of death, but I shall fear no evil because you are with me. There's no reason for me to fear. Hallelujah, anyhow. So I want you to think about that thing you're going through right now. And I want you to sing hallelujah, anyhow. Come on, let's say hallelujah. 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 I know you're going through it right now. Good morning, St. Albans. Good morning, St. Albans. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. As we can say hallelujah anyway, I heard somebody say it this way. Don't wait till the battle is over, shout now. Amen. Sometimes we think we have to get through the battle first before we can praise God and thank him for getting us through the battle, but the reality is we don't have to wait until the storm is over. We can have peace and joy and love even in the midst of the storm. Y'all don't get me started now. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. We, 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 we can walk through it knowing that, that God's on the side before we got in the storm. God is in the storm and God is going to meet us on the other side of the storm. And so we bless God this morning. You are stuck with me this morning to give you your announcements. Amen. Um, Dr. Tanya, she is here and working with the Sight and Sound Ministry, but is resting her voice uh, as some of it has been lost, and I encourage her to do so. So I am going to uh, read the announcements to you. First, I want to know if there are any uh, visitors with us today. If you're visiting with us, please stand. We'd like to recognize you, acknowledge you. Amen. Thank you for your courage, sister. Thank you so much. God bless you. We are so happy to have you with us, worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we, and, an usher is going to come to you in a moment, and they're going to give you a small card. We just simply ask that you fill that out, and uh, hopefully you can get it done before offering, and you can just put it in the plate. We'd like to simply send you a letter, a phone call, an email, and thank you for worshiping with us and letting you know that you are always Oh, see, I saw the arms and the hands like this, but I didn't know it was directed towards me. So this is Brother Tommy on bass. This is his wife, y'all. Amen. What's your name, please? Sue? Sue. Say, hey, Sue. Hey, Sue. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much again. All right, Tommy, I see you, brother. I see you. Amen. And we're glad to have uh, have you Sue here with us on today. Amen. See, so Tommy's going to be playing extra happy today, y'all. <laughs> y'all got to throw him a solo at least once during offertory or something like that, okay? Amen, amen. Um, okay, and so we want to, and moving forward in our announcements, we want to let you know that we are resuming all of our Bible studies and prayer service this week. So on Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. is our Nehemiah Men's Bible Study. All men, all brothers are welcome uh, to come and to share uh, with us. And y you might learn something. Amen. And so we want to invite you to come on by on Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our uh, PPP or prayer and praise pause service that the information 
for Wednesday, 7 p.m. is in your bulletin. Please take a look at it and join us for prayer service. It is always an uplifting time, uh, a time where we are able to hear prayer requests, but we're also able to hear prayer, uh, to, uh, praise reports. We're also able to receive praise reports. So again, Wednesday night uh, prayer service. Uh, and then Thursday afternoon, 12 noon, Overcomer Bible Study with Reverend Heron in the Gathering Place 2. And then Thursday night at 7 p.m., uh, Bible Study with myself uh, at 7 p.m., and we will resume uh, in the Gathering Place 1. All of the information is in your bulletin so you can know how to dial in or to call in to any of those Bible studies or prayer service happening this week. Amen. Also today, the April birthday, the birthday month celebration ministry is meeting this afternoon at 3 p.m. as we do each second Sunday of the month as we celebrate those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of April or anniversaries in the month of April. And the good news is that you don't even have to, your birthday could be in a totally different month or your anniversary in a totally different month, but you too can come out and celebrate those who are celebrating in the month of April. And so that's going to be today at 3 p.m. It's online only. And again, seek your bulletin for all of the dial-in and call-in information that you need to join us. Um, can you sing? Do you think you can sing? <laughs> Would you like to try to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land? That's what the Word of God says. We want to extend an invitation to you that if you are interested in joining the Celebration Mass Choir or you are interested in joining Exodus, any of the Exodus groups, we want to extend an invitation to you. If you want to join Exodus, please see Mr. T.L. Cross, who is up here. He looks like me. I look like him. So you want to you see him and uh, for, for Exodus, and I'll take anyone who's interested in the Celebration Mass Choir. Please see me after service. If you are interested, we're going to put your name and contact information in the hand of these two individuals and then make sure that you get your phone call and we take next steps so that we can continue to build upon our music department, both for the 8 a.m. and the 10 a.m. service. Amen. You can also email Doris. Her email address is in the bulletin, written in blue. Also, the Ruth and Naomi Women's Ministry, their April meeting will be in person, in person, on Saturday, April 20th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It will be held right here in the Family Life Center. Miss Elizabeth Gill Esquire will present on women what you need to know about estate planning, topics covered, will include wills, the probate, uh, wills, probate, power of attorney, and more. Ladies, you do not want to miss this informative session. Invite a sister friend to join you. Again, that's Saturday, April 20th, beginning at 11 a.m. on campus only. Um, these two are kind of together. Due to the Robert Ross Johnson co-naming, co-street renaming, um, the Because We Care Food Pantry is going to meet a little earlier in the week. So we're not meeting in April. We're not meeting, I repeat, we're not meeting on the fourth Saturday. We are meeting, I repeat, we are meeting on Tuesday, April 23rd, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday, April 23rd, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. We realize that this may impact some, some people's schedules and those who normally would be able to show up on a Saturday may or may not be able, but we ask that you make the effort as much as you can to give an hour, if you can only do an hour, or whatever you can do to help to prepare for that day would be greatly appreciated. And so on April 27th uh, at 1 p.m., we will meet here at the Family Life Center, and we will... Uh, celebrate the uh, street co-naming ceremony that we will have. Uh, we'll process outside. We'll go to the corner of Linden Boulevard and Marne Street, and we will add the name Robert Ross Johnson Boulevard to the sign that says Linden Boulevard on top of that, I believe. And so basically, uh, we want to invite you to come out. We'll be together for a little while, but this is a historic and a momentous occasion. And if you can come out on Saturday, I urge you to do so. This is something that is happening and will likely never happen again, or at least not in the same way. So please come on out and support this wonderful celebration that we will have together. Amen. And so with that being said, I would like to let you know on this Justice Witness Sunday, we have a Justice Witness moment. And so let's give God a hand clap of praise for Brother Bill Scarborough of our Justice Witness Ministry who will bring us that moment at this time.
Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Uh, less than two weeks ago, on April 2nd, 2024, New Yorkers had an opportunity to vote in the presidential primary. The voting in the primary was fairly low, which was not surprising. The general perception is that the results were already decided. Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee, and Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee for president. And if uh, I'm beating this drum again, forgive me, it's a measure of my concern about where we are. But when I had the opportunity to speak for the congregation in December, I said that the fact that these two candidates were polling badly and a number of citizens would prefer that those were not our choices would lead many to consider voting for third party candidates. We now have many people looking to do just that, looking at the prospects of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. or Cornel West or others. Of course, this is a democracy and everyone is entitled to vote for whomever they want. But I think one thing is clear at this point, either Joe Biden or Donald Trump will be elected president on November 5th, 2024. This is a fact, and to me, I find that fact both scary and motivating. In my opinion, and I wanna be clear that I'm speaking only for me, I'm not speaking for pastor, I'm not speaking for St. Albans Congregational Church. In my opinion, I think Donald Trump is the most dangerous person to ever get so close to the American presidency. As I mentioned in December, Donald Trump lost the 2020 election and then tried every legal and extra legal means to overturn the lawful result of the election, encouraging his supporters to attack the US Capitol on January 6, 2021 in a bid to stay in power. He has continued to perpetrate the lie that the election was stolen, which he knows is not true. He has deliberately and continually attacked the institutions in American society that are set up as checks on the power of a rogue leader, including the court system, the media, our electoral system, the opposition party, and any prosecutor or criminal justice system that has sought to hold him accountable for his actions. His intentional goal is to weaken the power and sow distrust in these institutions so that if he returned to the presidency, they cannot hold him accountable or act as a check on his actions. He has openly promised retribution against his perceived political enemies, including President Joe Biden. He has promised to use the Justice Department to seek revenge on his adversaries. He has expressed admiration for some of the worst dictators of the past and present, including Vladimir Putin and Adolf Hitler. He has stated that if elected, he will be a dictator for one day only. I would put this question to the congregation. Does anybody here think that if Donald Trump were elected president in November, that he will peacefully leave office in four years? No. Some may consider this a harsh assessment, but these are my concerns about Donald Trump and the coming election. What I find equally concerning are the reports that more African Americans, especially African American men, are considering voting for Trump. This amazes me because in my opinion, Trump has shown nothing but contempt for people of color. This is the man that pushed the lie for years that Barack Obama, our first black president, was not a US citizen and thus was not eligible to be president. Many do not know that he pushed the same false claim against Kamala Harris, our first, vice, uh, first black vice president in 2020, claiming that she was not a US citizen. This was the man, and pastor, forgive me, this is what the man said. <laughs> this is the man who called Haiti and African countries shithole countries of no value. This is the man that was charged numerous times in his real estate career of discriminating against potential black tenants. This is the man who publicly stated that bleach could cure COVID, a disease that killed blacks at more than twice the rate of whites. I recognize that Joe Biden has shortcomings. Some people think he is too old. Some don't like his policy in the Israel-Gaza war. Some people are upset about inflation. Some people say they don't see what Biden has done. I will mention two quick examples. We in this community cannot go a couple of blocks 
without seeing our roads being repaired, from Sayers Avenue to Brinkerhoff Avenue to Newburgh Street to Mexico Street. These are a few examples of the infrastructure funding that Biden has delivered that will improve roads throughout Queens and New York City. Also, Biden has forced reductions in the cost of insulin that is benefiting millions of black people who suffer from diabetes. I could miss much more, but for the sake of time, I would not do so. I would just ask each of you, remember the constant chaos when Trump was president. Think about what he has said he will do if he is again elected as president. And seriously think about what a future Trump presidency would look like. I think that would be a dark future for all of us. Thank you and God bless. Amen, amen. No apology needed. I have heard worse in the pulpit. We have heard worse in the pulpit. It is, and, and, and though, though Brother Bill wasn't standing in the pulpit, he makes a, a very strong argument um, as we look forward and as we move forward as a country, and particularly as it, as it relates to people of color and the black community. And so, I'm, I'm not going to ask you who you're voting for, nor am I going to try to convince you to vote for one over another. But let's really take a strong look. I, I, I am reminded, Brother Bill, as you were giving your piece, I was standing on the side, as you know, and I was looking at you, and, and beyond where you were standing is this sign right here that says, He is risen. He is risen indeed. So, so let us be reminded that God has the last word. However, he needs yours and I, and I, our help to get the work done in this place. Let's give God something to work with. If we take one step towards God, the God will take two steps towards us. And so let us, let us take seriously what is happening. And I know we are, but just it's always good to be reminded of the things that are taking place in case we have fallen asleep. And so get out and vote, everybody. Voting is your voice. And so make sure you exercise it. Too many people have come and gone, have died that you and I can go to the polls to be able to make our choice of who we believe is the best person or individual to be in that particular seat. So let us not sit home and say it's all rigged and politics and all of that, whatever. But get out there and vote. You'll feel a little bit better that you actually went out and you have a voice in what is said in the, in the, in the end. And so thank you to Brother Bill Scarborough and thank you to the Justice Witness Ministry uh, that come to us each second Sunday. As we move forward in our worship service, we want to be reminded of the giving of our tithes and offerings. So, it's time to give. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. God bless you. Amen. We want to take this moment to give. I want to just be very transparent. I was thinking about this, Brother Dalton, last night. as actually about 3 o'clock this morning as I was preparing, uh, continuing to prepare to, 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 to worship with you this morning and I just and I and the, and the Lord dropped a little something in my spirit and said you know the reality is most of us we, you know mm, I stand here before you and I often say things like give and it shall be given pressed down shaken together and running over shall other give unto you or I'll stand here sometimes and says the, and say the Bible says bring ye all the tithes and offering into the storehouse so that my house may not have room enough to receive. Or sometimes you may hear me give you the context of tithing and talk to you about Abraham and how he made it out of battle and how he was blessed by Melchizedek and how they sat down and had communion and how Melchizedek produced, pronounced the blessing on Abraham and his family and how Abraham saw it not robbery to give 10% to, to the people of all that he did not even earn for himself. It was given to him. I, I stand here Sunday after Sunday and I said that, but the Lord said to me last night, Brenda Dawkins, he said, people already have decided if they're going to give before they get here. So let's just prepare our hearts and minds to give of our tithes and offering 
Let's do our best to give graciously because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, you can stand right there if you want to. <laughs> so, a couple of things. We're going to do our theme song here. And I know y'all know it. We've been singing this for a long time, and this is a song that has blessed us. It's uh, exclusive to this church, which is pretty cool. And also, uh, Pastor talked about people coming out uh, for Exodus. Uh, what you'll learn is that Exodus has uh, three different groups. Exodus Singers, Exodus Ensemble, Exodus Choral Group, or Exodus Chorale, as Pastor calls us. All right, so listen, we'd love to have you. If you have a heart for the Lord, come on down and let's do some of this right here. Let's go. Come on, put your hands together. This song says simply, we have come to praise your name. We have come to praise your name. We won't leave here the way we came. We won't leave here the way we came. Let's do it in harmony right here. We say, we have come to praise your name. We won't leave here the way we came. So the verse says simply, we came in here to give you glory. Yes, we came in here. In the morning, morning, in the morning, morning, 
in the morning. Sunday we say thank you. Thank you Lord for providing us that we may have a reasonable portion of good health that we may be able to put food on the table. And we thank you for the clothes that are on our back and the roof that is on our head. And Father you only ask us for a portion that you have given to us. And so we thank you on this day for, provi for providing for us individually and for the mission of this church. We pray oh God for the giver and we pray and ask that you bless the both the giver and the gift, and may it all be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I, as we move forward into our worship experience and we come to the place of prayer, I want to read into your hearing a card that was given to me this morning, uh, and it reads as follows. It says, to Reverend Eli Wilson III, Reverend Jennifer Heron, Reverend Franklin Wilson, the Ruth and Naomi women's group, the Celebration Mass Choir, my entire church family. Thank you for honoring me on Women's Day. It was truly a surprise and a well-kept secret. I would not, in my wildest dreams, have imagined such an honor. Nevertheless, I could not have received a better honor than that given for me during doing God's work. Again, thanks to all, Marcia Donovan, our sister and friend who is at the eight o'clock service, but let's give a hand clap of praise for her. Hey, hey, there she is right there. Hey, there's Marcia. God bless you. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were here at 10 too. Amen, God bless you. I don't know, Swindler, I don't know if it's possible, but can I have some more on this, please? Thank you. Amen, amen. So we move forward in prayer at this time as we continue to keep those on our healing and care list in prayer. We want to continue to keep the Whitfield family who is grieving from the loss of their grandmother, Keisha Whitfield, lost her grandmother, Pearl Small. We also want to keep in prayer our sister Mary Campbell and family, and we also want to keep, uh, who lost their nephew, and we also want to keep in prayer sister Susan Van Brackle and family who lost her sister, 
Zeteria Palmer Curtis, and there are others who are on our prayer list. Today I see Brother Howard Sib Siblis here and his family. I don't know if you'd like to keep the Siblis family. I'll continue to keep them lifted in prayer as well. Perhaps you have something also pressing upon you, uh, and we'd like to encourage you and invite you to bring your concerns to the Lord and to leave them there. Sometimes we want to take it back with us or we want to carry it on our own, but I encourage you to just give it to the Lord. Just give it to the Lord. Just give it to the Lord. You keep doing what you're supposed to be doing and give that other stuff that you can't do anything about, that worry that you have, that stress that you have. You can't do nothing about that on your own, but God can all by God's self. And so we want to give those concerns to the Lord and pray with expectation and anticipation for the answers to our prayers. And so we have asked Deacon Rosemary Babb uh, to come help to usher us to the throne of grace in prayer on behalf of the people. Let us pray. Oh, how excellent you are, loving Father. You are the one true living God, our Lord and Master. We are grateful to gather for prayer at your throne of grace. With humility and adoration and glad hearts, we give thanks for this time of prayer at St. Albans Congregational Church. We worship and praise your majestic name. We bow to your glory, giving all honor to you. We recognize who you are. You are all powerful, all present, and all knowing. We come, Father God, with humble confidence, knowing your dear Son, Jesus the Christ, has gone before us and has made a way. So thankful are we for his sacrifice and our salvation. Before we present our petitions, dear Father, we confess and ask forgiveness for every spoken word, every secret thought, every action that has fallen short of your divine way. Change our appetite, Lord. Make it more of you. We want to be more clean through your spirit and your word. You are lovingly invited into our lives, our hearts, and our souls. Father God, please lay your healing hands on those suffering from physical and mental health concerns. Have mercy, Lord, on the sick and homebound. Increase faith and hope for those preparing or recuperating from procedures and, and surgeries. We ask for patience, strength, and healing according to your will. We trust and believe you are our healer, our counselor, our great physician. Father God, lay your compassionate hands on those in seasons of mourning. Help them walk through these difficult times as you comfort them with your presence, care, and love. Gracious God, bring peace and clarity, trust and love to periods of chaos, confusion, doubt and fear that we often pack with us as we journey through life. Father God, lay your covering of divine wisdom, guidance and powerful protection on our dear Reverend Eli Wilson III, Reverend Jennifer Heron, and Reverend Franklin Wilson Jr. Thank you for blessing our church family with their leadership and faithfulness. Bless them with the mind of Christ. Keep them, Lord, and their families at all times and in all ways. Loving Father, order our steps to be faithful followers and doers of your word. Help us face each day with love, joy, peace, and hope, knowing you are the solid rock on which we stand. Help us remember you have given us more than we could ever ask for or imagine. We love you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, amen. If you look in your bulletin and you don't have your Bibles, the scripture is written in there. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 28, which is the last chapter of that book. And we're going to begin at, the, at verse 
24. I'm going to read all the way to the end. Acts chapter 28, verse 24, and it reads, Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made one, had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors when he said through Isaiah the prophet, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their hearts, their eyes, hear with their ears understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. Therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two, two whole years Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. This is the word of the Lord. May God's name be praised. Amen. So, there's something y'all don't know. You know, I come up here and I... You know, sometimes I just bring notes up here, you know, for myself and formats and stuff like that. But what y'all don't know is uh, when I'm over there, sometimes my kids start drawing on my papers. <laughs> and sometimes they bring some of the stuff that they drew in Sunday school. And I end up with stuff like this in my notes. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's Jesus on the cross. Good job, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. And my son is just a magnificent drawer as well. But behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's, that's one of my favorite passages. Uh, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in, sup with them and they with me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will come in. What we miss is, sometimes what we miss is, we think that this passage applies to people who don't have Christ in their life. You know, this is the, the person becoming a Christian, professing you know, if you confess your mouth, Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, thou be, shall be saved. But Jesus is knocking on our doors every single day for your purpose. Are you on the right path? Are we doing all that we need to be doing? Are we doing the things that Christ is calling us to do? Not just necessarily generally, but also overall in every single day. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is a song that simply says, Someone's knocking at your door. Someone's knocking at your door. Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? He's been knocking very long. Yeah. He's been knocking for so long. Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 is at your door. Oh, yes, he is. Let's say that again. 
says don't let him walk away he's so patient but don't take the chance all you need to do is open the door open the door let him take his rightful place so he could change Open up the door. Jesus, Is there anybody here Jesus, who is ready to open Jesus, the door? Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, I want you to sit there and Jesus, think about it. Jesus, Has Jesus been knocking Jesus, on your door? Your door. 
Hallelujah. Exodus and the music department on today. Amen. Let's give God some praise for them. Amen. You was thumping and plucking there, Brother Tommy. Amen. I like my face got ugly for a minute. You know, you was doing, I was like, mmm. That's how, that was some playing, Doc. That was some playing. God bless you and thank you again. Go to this people and say you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak. Speak clearly. Speak boldly so that your people may hear a word from you, that we all will be edified, but most importantly, your name will be glorified, and we will be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you always and so richly deserve. It is in the precious name of Christ we pray and give thanks, and all of God's children said amen. Amen and amen. Yesterday, as I told the 8 o'clock crowd this morning, yesterday I was scheduled to be in an 11 a.m. meeting with the Usher board to discuss Usher's Day, which I didn't mention yet. Let me pause right here, parenthetically, and tell you that the Usher, Usher's Day is April, the last Sunday of this month. Amen. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but I'm glad I caught it. April, the last Sunday of this month, which is the 28th, please come out and support our ushers on Usher's Day as we celebrate them. And that's what we were supposed to talk about in person yesterday. They were in person. I was not in attendance. It wasn't planned that way. I had planned on being present at the meeting, but I had gotten my, my wires crossed because there was something that was already on the schedule that uh, my wife had to remind me of. And then when she saw my face, like, she was like, I told you this like a month ago. For real, you forgot? <laughs> that meant that, that were, there were some people working inside of the home. And then as the, the, the week went on, prior to yesterday, as the week went on, uh, one of my brother's very good friends, and you may know of him, his name is Casey Benjamin. He was a great musician, internationally known. Uh, came out of LaGuardia School of the Performing Arts, played the saxophone, played the keys. I, I think maybe he might have played drums as well. Very talented young man, but he died suddenly. At a very young age, I, he was maybe around 45. And he had passed away, and my brother called me with this grave news, and he himself was struggling to work through this challenging moment. After all, my brother had spoken to KC the day that he died. Called KC to say, hey, man, I want to get you to the church so that you can come and play and show, you know, you know, 
bring us your gifts and talents and your skills and to play with the band. And he said, I would love to, except I just had a surgical procedure. And Tone, my brother, hung up the phone with him that day and said, well, when you get better, we're going to get you over the St. Albans Congregational Church so the people can be blessed by your gifts and talents. But no sooner than my brother hung up the phone from his friend Casey, he got the word sometime within the next 24 hours that Casey Benjamin had passed away. My brother called me. We, 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 I can tell he was, you know, his, his, his voice was different, right? And, and he was like, I'm sorry to bring you this, this, this grave news. And he told me about Casey's passing. And he said, listen, I really want to be at the wake and at the funeral, he and his wife, my sister Ann. And he said, can you watch the kids for me on Saturday? I said, no problem. I'm going to be here anyway. We got people working inside the house. So Tone and Ann, they dropped the kids off yesterday, and, and Elijah and Nala, and I got a new cat. His name is Richie. <laughs> Belle was a girl. Richie is a boy. He's a, he's a Norwegian forest cat. Very hairy and very different from Belle, but a great cat nonetheless. And we were all in the house in this one room I call the sunroom because the workers were working in the living room and the dining room. So we spent our time in the sunroom talking and playing. My nephew Elijah loves to get on Google Maps and drive down the street with his tap tap and he goes down the street tap tap and he goes down the street. He was able to find the Long Island Railroad at Jamaica Station from his house in Laurelton on the Google Maps. This is the eight year old I'm talking about. Nala enjoyed her, her Wufu. She likes Wufu, so she enjoyed watching Wufu on YouTube while Elijah enjoyed uh, working with Google Maps and, and Richie was in there and the kids enjoyed the cat as well. We had a good time, but, but, but I felt like I was, I didn't feel because of the children or the cat, but because of the workers that were working in the other room, I felt like I was stuck in this small space, right? That I was in this small space, even after my sister Ann came and picked up the children, uh, after they left, I was still stuck in the sunroom because the people were working in the living room and in the dining room. But something happened. And, and, and so I'm not mad, nor am I complaining about being stuck in that sunroom for about four hours, right? I had to turn on Disney Plus and find something to watch. And, you know, I was on my phone. And then I asked myself, why, Ms. Joan, why am I picking up the phone and and getting on social media because I don't have or I feel as if I don't necessarily have something to do in this moment. They, the floor was covered, so I couldn't walk back to go get some books or even to go get my Bible. I had to turn to it in my phone. But something happened while I was sitting in the sunroom. Charles, my phone rang. And when my phone rang, it was someone on the other side of the, of the phone call who was in need of some help. They were in need of someone to talk to. They were in need of some advice. They just needed to, 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 to share and to vent. And, and I was glad that I picked up the phone, and I was glad that they reached out and I was glad that we had the conversation that we had and then no sooner than I hung up that phone Dr. Linda Batson guess what happened another call came in and it was someone who was looking for some advice and I sat there in the sunroom and talked to these different folk after I ended up on the I was on the phone call with the ushers by phone I wasn't there uh, physically, but I was there by phone. And after getting off the phone with the ushers and discussing business, the phone just was ringing and ringing. And, and some of those calls were people who were in places of need. And then in that moment, God gave me the title of this sermon. Your, your bulletin, your program says living in a rented house, but the Lord said, nah, that's not it. So uh, because God in that moment shared with me in my, in my heart, shared with me that what you are doing and what you are illustrating as you are speaking with people who are in places of need, trying to give the godly advice and wisdom that hopefully will work praying with them in their time of trouble. What you are doing and illustrating is you are showing your, you are showing not just yourself and others, but you are showing that you are a broker for the broken. That's what I want. That's the title of the sermon today. Broker for the broken. Paul is in Rome and 
he's been traveling all over the world and he, he's, he's on his way to Rome and he gets there on his way. He's been teaching the, the, the Jewish, his brothers in the Jewish and sisters in the Jewish culture about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they, as the text tells us, they didn't, they had physical eyes and physical ears, but they couldn't hear the message of what Paul was trying to bring to them. They didn't seem to understand what they heard. They could, they could see physically, but they could not look below the surface and see the one who changed their lives. I would argue in this moment that, that I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying this is what came to me in just now in this moment that, that, that some of us have physical eyesight, but we can't see what God is saying. And perhaps Mr. Barnett, who does not have eyesight, might have more insight than church folk. I ain't talking about nobody. You, you, you see Mr. Barnett every now and again on Sunday uh, when, the, when the group, when the, the choir is singing, the, the chorale is singing, the praise team is singing, Brother Barnett, it don't matter who looking, he don't care. What he knows is that God is speaking to him through this song and he gets up and he starts to clap his hands and if he knows the words, he starts to sing the song while some of us who may have physical sight, who may even be in a different situation or even a better situation than somebody else or sitting Sitting there tight lip, unable or not willing to give God the fruit of our lips. But, but know that you're a broker for the broken. And, and, and you can't know how to be a broker for the broken unless you have been broken yourself. When you have been broken, I remember uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. Rudy McKissick Jr. preached a sermon that said the church needs to go to hell. I remember this very well. It was the end of a, rev a five-night revival week. And when he said the title, about a third of the congregation got up and walked out of the sanctuary. But I'm going to tell you, they missed their blessing because the point of his sermon was the fact of the matter is that the church needs to go to hell because we got the directions to the exit. And we need to go back and get some folk who don't know how to get to the exit so that they can be able to see the light as you and I have been able to see the light. But those that Paul had originally been talking to, they, they heard, but they didn't seem to understand. They saw, but they couldn't look below the surface. They can only see what was on the outside. They couldn't see what was on the inside, the very thing that is Christ Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah who changed their lives lives. So Paul goes on to quote the prophet Isaiah in his explanation as he talks to, 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 to them about their deafness and their blindness. But not all Jews were rejected in that day, in the day of Paul. Some of them became, became Jews for Jesus. They call them Judeo-Christians. And Paul continued to witness to both the Jew and the Gentile, the Jew and the Judeo-Christian, as he had always done. And so when we, when we see him in Acts, the Bible says that, that as he had said, when he made that final, uh, final statement that he made, there was a few folk that got up and walked out of the room it reminds me of the time in which they were the same ones that walked out of the room were the same ones who wanted to stone the woman who was considered the adulterer and Jesus walked up and said he or she without a, a sin cast the first stone and the Bible says that as Jesus started writing in the sand one by one they started to walk away I argue brother Billy Mitchell that the reason why they started walking away is because they started seeing their own name and their own own sin spelled out as Jesus was spelling it and when they saw their name they said I cannot cast a stone on this adulterer because I myself am not sinless so Paul goes to Rome he spends two whole years there renting a house that means he had to have a job I don't know anybody that pays rent without a job unless there's some illegal activity going on Right? 
But he had to work. Paul was a tent maker. He put his hands to work and, and it raised monies. It raised compensation for him that he may be able to eat every day and, and to be able to pay the rent that he had to pay. But when you go, if anybody ever has gone to live or, 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 or rented an apartment, then typically in the city of New York, when you go to rent an apartment, you got to go see Brother Charles Thomas. I'm going to give a quick shout out for you, brother. He's in real estate right now. And whenever you and whenever you go to rent a, a space in the, an apartment building, you got to go see Charles Thomas. And Charles Thomas is going to say, well, rent costs $1,500. So you're going to have to pay first month's rent, $1,500. Security, which is another $1,500. And then you're going to pay me $1,500 as the broker. You with me? So, so Thomas is the one, that Charles is the one who stands in the gap and makes it work, makes the transaction happen. You just have to have the currency to, to be able to purchase what it is you're trying to purchase so you can move into your rented house. Like Paul, he opened up his doors to anybody who was willing to come in into this place where he lived. He welcomed Jew and Gentile alike and he sat down and spoke boldly about the kingdom of God and taught about Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know if you were here for our revival this past week, but Reverend Onaje L.A. Crawford tore the place down. If you were, didn't get a chance to see it or you weren't on campus to experience it, I encourage you to go to our YouTube page and take a look. It will bless your life. On the second day of his revival, on the second day of the revival, amen. Amen. On the second day of the revival, he reminded us of the eclipse that had taken place, the total eclipse that had taken place on Monday, April 8th. And, 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 and he talked to us and reminded us that, that sometimes the reason why the moon looks like the size of the sun is because of our distance away from the sun. But his point was when we get closer to the sun, we recognize that the thing that's between us and the sun is really not that large at all. It's minuscule compared to the power and, the, and that the sun is able to give off. His point was when we get close to the S-O-N, we will realize that our problems are so small that the S-O-N, who has already overcome the world, can carry us through our situation. That was the point he made. That, that was the, the point he, was, he started out in making in that particular uh, sermon on night number two. And it reminds us that though Jesus' ministry may seem like a maze, it may seem difficult. Have you ever walked into a maze and you think you know where you're going except you hit a wall and then you got to turn around and go back the opposite direction? Well, when we look at Jesus' ministry, sometimes it can feel that way. Sometimes it can feel like a maze. We think we got the answer until we realize realize we're doing it without Jesus and we hit a wall and we got to turn around and go back to the place where watch this we left Christ not Christ leaving us and so it reminds us that Jesus's ministry can sometimes seem like a maze or the obstacles seeming as if it imitates a particular or a total eclipse and we feel sometimes so far from the shores of divine enlightenment and there and therefore we are indeed called to come close closer to the reign of God. That's what the preacher talked about on Sunday, on, uh, on Wednesday. And I just want us to be reminded of that as we move forward in this sermon, because if we are to accurately and properly study Jesus as prophet, we cannot do so by disconnecting politics and theology. Everything is politics. Everything is theology. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now everything, it, it, it starts with God and it ends with God. I know we want to do a separation of church and state, but the reality is that is just about impossible to do. My family calls me Trey. Y'all call me Reverend Eli. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm still in one body. How can I separate Eli from Trey? I can't do that. The reality is that uh, the, the, the theology of Jesus' ministry is the politics of God. If we are to understand the struggle of the poor, the struggle who are considered the least of these, we must do so through the context of Jesus' 
portrayal of God. I don't know if you've ever taken a look at the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch can be found in its fullest form in the Ethiopian Bible. And when you look at Enoch, he starts out his, his writing by saying, I am not writing for this generation. I am writing for a generation that is to come. This one author suggests that as we consider what Enoch says, that we also ought to consider that not only are we speaking for a future generation, but we're speaking for a particular age, a particular generation in order that we may be reminded of our own vocational responsibilities as a popular and yet a peasant prophet. Jesus deeply embeds himself in Galilean and the Galilean village life and he does so for the purpose of connecting with the yearning of the village. Anybody got a yearning for God, a yearning for healing, a yearning for joy, a yearning for more love? Jesus is in the neighborhood. He came to connect with this yearning of those who lived in the village and who lived in the countryside in order that the proper meaning of the Torah for them that at that time in the Bible for us today could be accurately understood regarding social and economical and political situations in light of the covenant promises of God. This proved to animate Jesus' public work to address the fruitfulness of the land independent of the temple system for the people and to address the exploitation and oppression by internal elites, to address the exploitation and oppression of colonial mindsets by the imperialistic power. Jesus' opposition was to paying taxes to Caesar and threatening to destroy the temple and even how dare he claim claim to be the Messiah, all of that is what led to that old rugged cross on Calvary. Y'all with me? So, we work to weave politics and theology together based on our material conditions, the places where we are, and, and the things that we need in order to make sense of God's covenant. We weave together God's covenant with God's theology with unlearning some stuff. Unlearning does not mean forget everything that you know. Unlearning just simply means redirect your focus. Right? It's not enough to say, I'm going to stop eating sugar, because undoubtedly we're going to start eating sugar. Because the focus is on sugar. But we have to say, I will eat more healthily. I will eat more fruits and vegetables. I will get more rest so I am ready for the new day. I will spend more time with my children. I will spend. We have to focus on what we will do, not what we won't do. And so when we think about the fate uh, of, these, of, the, of the poor, of, of what, what many refer to as the peasants when they're struggling to survive, when we understand their fate, because we've been there before, we can begin to understand the context of Jesus' portrayal of God, the God in the person of Jesus the Christ. And, and so Christ's assumed public role is as God's broker to a broken world. As we seek to be brokers, as we seek to stand in the gap for those who, are, who don't have a voice, as we seek to stand in intercessory prayer on those who don't know what to say and don't know what to say, don't know what to pray, we are able to use that, imag that imagination and that creativity that we need to go to God in that word of prayer. What I'm saying is that, as, as Brother B Bill Scarborough said during his piece, uh, he alluded to this. It didn't, he didn't say this specifically, but he alluded to the importance of deeply becoming embedded in the, the life of the black community. Jesus did it with the Galilean village life and that community, and we can do it today. And when you think about Jesus, when you add the mix of Jesus' own distinct voice, he was rooted in his reputation as a traditional teacher and healer, and the foundation is laid for understanding Jesus as prophet. So, realize 
this hidden reign of God. It, what it needs is it needs to be nurtured through our little traditions. What do you mean little traditions? Well, I know that the Allisons will always create and carve out time to go and see their grandbaby. That's a little tradition. Little, not in the sense of small or minuscule, but things that are important to your family and things that are important to your circle. I know that when uh, uh, my brother, he does the music thing with his kids uh, to the point where they are always singing something, even making up their own tunes. That's a tradition for his family that works, and we have to keep these traditions. I don't know, maybe it's something different for, for you, but keeping these traditions as we read the Word of God and as we consider the covenantal provisions that God has given to us. Jesus traveled throughout the villages of Galilee and he kept sowing the mustard seed of the kingdom. And so, I want to say in my closing, what I have learned and what I hope you have maybe already learned or will learn is the value of understanding how what, what Paul teaches us as this broker for the broken is that we must, you, you know, he, he is put in prison much later. That's a political move. That's a political move because Paul was seen as a threat. He was someone that did not assimilate into Roman culture. And anyone who does not assimilate into the present culture is a threat. Martin Luther King was a threat. M, uh, uh, Malcolm X was a threat. Adam Clayton Powell, uh, 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 so many that we can name. Uh, if I start running down a list, I'm going to leave somebody out. But they were a threat. Anyone who does not assimilate into the present culture, of the, that is to say the dominant culture, is considered a threat. You and I, my brothers and sisters, we're considered a threat just by the color of our skin. And that our experience, experiences are different. So within this world, we simply seek to find our place in it all in order that the broken may recognize the divine broker. That nothing ages faster than relevance. And I have learned that relevance is only relevant for a moment. Relevance may no longer be relevant when the moment has passed. And subscribing to the writings again found in the book of Enoch, I have learned that I am not writing for this and I am not necessarily speaking for simply this current age, but for an age that is to come. In that reminder to revisit that vocational responsibility that I have to you and to others in order that the people may be fed by God. I have learned that the deeper I go in my study, the more I will uh, find am ambiguities and uncertainties, but not for the purpose of weakness, but indeed for the purpose of strength. And so it is my prayer for each and every one of us that we explore more deeply methods that we can work with and work through to, to support others and to be a resource for others, uh, 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 that we spend time uh, caring for those who are caregivers, checking in on those who are suffering from some kind of illness. I pray that we seek to become a broker for the broken. I pray that we will study how to remain relevant in a time where relevance often is not the priority. I pray that we will use creative and imaginative measures in partnership with crucial analysis and reflection to bring some kind of comfort and peace, to bring some kind of faith and joy and, and, and to bring some kind of explanations even to when people have more questions or more confused and have more questions than they have answers. I simply want to be remind all of us that the word of God says if th those who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Paul talks about in the very next book of Romans he says this is how everybody is going to be saved by God. I brought the word of God to my own kinfolk just as Jesus 
the forerunner did for, for in his time, and they rejected it. And then I brought the message to the Gentiles. You can read about it. I think it's in Romans chapter 11. And he said, then I brought it to the Gentiles. When I brought it to the Gentiles, the Jews got jealous because they got with something that the Jews were struggling to understand in Paul's day. And so they said, well, wait, hold on a second. Let me see a little bit about what, what was that you said again? And, 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 and Paul says, this is how everyone is going to come together in the kingdom of God. Some will reject it. Some will accept it. But some who do reject it hopefully will come around and say, wait, let me take another look. I like this idea of being a, a broker to the broken. I've been broken before. I know how it feels to be in pain. I know what it feels like to be, to need some healing. I know what it feels like when you need prayer from your brothers and sisters. I understand what brokenness feels like. And because I've been there, I have the directions to the exit. Let me go back and get some people who can't see where the exit is. And I will take the light that is in me, that shines through me and let that torch sign so together that, that it is not the blind leading the blind it's the faith leading the ones who are unable to see and with the faith of Christ with trust in God we hold that torch and we let that torch sign until we get to the exit and then they will have a testimony and they'll say if it wasn't for Miss Joan inviting me to church if it wasn't for Deacon Sandra saying let me pray for you if it wasn't for this one if it wasn't for that one, I'd still be in the dark. But thanks be to God that there is a community of Christ, that there is a loving community who sees it not robbery to take some of the time to come and be a shoulder that someone can cry on, to just be there even if you don't say nothing. Because sometimes there is something called the theology of presence. And the theology of presence means you don't have to always speak in the situation. Sometimes you can just grab a chair and say, my brother, my sister, I got you. I'm just going to sit here and read my Bible. When you're ready to speak, I'm ready to listen. I'm thinking about Cornelius who sent out for Peter. And the angel of the Lord came and said, go send for Peter. And they sent for Peter. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he said, why have you called me here? And Cornelius said, the angel of the Lord came to me, said that God has heard my prayers, gave me the instructions to sin for you. So I sit for you. And then this is the key. This is the part I love the most. He said, I don't know what you have to say, but me and my family are sitting here ready to hear whatever it is you want to share. And the Bible says that day they were the first Gentiles to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. It was believed before then that there was only a certain group of people that could be filled with the Holy Spirit. But that day, God showed them that everybody is my people. I don't care where you're from, what your background is, where you've been. If you spent time in prison, guess what? I've been arrested before too. That don't matter. But what does matter is your soul, that your soul is protected, that your soul has what it needs, that we're not living so much in the past or living too much in the future, but we're able to enjoy the present. So I just have a question. Would you like to be a broker for the broken? Would you like to be a broker for the broken? That's all Paul was, and he did it from his house. He sat in his house, and he just left his door open. And anybody that wants to see some of us, we like, yo, don't come to my house without calling first. You'll be standing outside ringing that doorbell. You're going to be mad that you burned that gas. But, but Paul is an example. See, Jesus is the ultimate example. Jesus went from village to village. And Paul went from place to place planting churches. But it came a time where he sat in one space. And people had heard about this great message and said, I want to know more about Jesus. And they may come to you. The doors of the church are open. They may come to you. And they may say, they, they, they may not mention anything about God, Jesus, or any of that. But they may come to you because there's something about you that says to them, 
You start talking to somebody. Have you ever started talking to somebody? And then you go home and you see, you see Sandra. And by the time you see Sandra, you start rethinking that conversation. You're like, you know what? I told them my whole portfolio. I told them everything about me. They just said, how you doing? And I just told them everything about me. That's because that person has a gift. And we are drawn to such things where we say, I feel comfortable talking to you. And in that moment, you become a broker to someone who may be broken. So we want to open the doors of the church to someone who wants to be a broker for this broken world by adding Christ to your life, accepting Christ to your life. Perhaps you're looking for a church home. and You've been searching. We're not a perfect church, but we are a loving church. Perhaps you just want to rededicate your life to Christ. We want to take a moment to carry everything to God in prayer. The doors are open. Is there one? Come on, y'all got to do like I got to do. You got to pull out your phone and Google the words. Gonna let Joan sing a solo. Amen. sing that song all the way home today after this news I give you. Right. Uh, someone, uh, uh, someone who is here today in our congregation by the name of Norma Douglas uh, was just taken to the hospital literally while we were closing out the sermon. Um, and we're not sure yet what necessarily the issue is, but she had to be rushed to the hospital. So, but what a friend we have in Jesus. That God indeed is the great physician and we pray that the Lord's will will be done. That the angels of the Lord will be with her, will go before her, and will be in that place already at work in the eyes, the ears, the minds, the hands of those that will tend to her and her medical need. So we're going to again, Norma Douglas, please keep her lifted in your prayers. Uh, and, and I'm going to pray now and ask everyone to stand because we're going to go ahead and give the benediction. Um, to those who are working today in the, in the music department, uh, the usher board, sight and sound all together, uh, and others, you already have the word that uh, to go to the conference room sometime after the end of service, uh, that there is something there for you uh, to say, you know, just a small token, okay? Uh, Michelle Chase all the way from New Jersey. Good to see you today. And Sylvia Walker, I see you in the back. Syl yes, ma'am, Sylvia Walker's here too. God bless you, God bless you. And there are cookies in the back on behalf of the birthday month celebration, so stop by, get a cookie, a little pick-me-up, a little something to hold you till you get to dinner. Uh, and again, to, the, to those who are working today, um, there is, go to the conference room, uh, in the hallway over there, small conference room. Uh, with that being said, let us give a word of prayer along with the benediction. Lord God, we just thank you again for this day that you have made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. We pray, Father, that the word that you have given us, help us to be, help us to remember that when, we're in, we're, when we are in a situation, whether ourselves, we're in crisis, that you have the absolute power and capability to send someone to help broker on our behalf when we're in broken places. And help us to remember that when we come in contact with someone who is in a place of crisis, that we can remember in that moment that we are ambassadors for Christ, that stand in the gap for those who are in places of need. And so, Father, 
On that note, we pray for Norma Douglas. We don't have all the information and details, oh God, of what is happening with her. But we, our heart goes out to her and to her family. We pray that you will be with her. We pray that you make the crooked way straight. And we pray that she will, as we all will do, give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you always deserve. For it is unto you now, O oh God, who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before your throne. May your love, may your grace, and may your peace go with us all both now and forevermore. And all of God's children said amen. 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 And remember, don't let anybody steal, steal your, your joy. joy. God bless you, everyone.